Hello ladies and gents and welcome to my one chunk at a time Iron Man official unofficial rule guide. So through this entire video we're going to be going through every single rule that I have thought of or have laid out for my account. Now as I said in the beginning it's my official unofficial guide and things are subject to change as things pop up throughout the game and as updates come down through the game as well. I can't predict everything but this is the best that I have. If you are watching during a stream or just want to get the very base level understanding of what I do on this account, just watch the first couple of minutes. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll fly through the base real quickly. If you want to learn a real in-depth look at what I'm doing during this account, feel free to watch the entire thing. It takes a very deep dive into all the rules that I'll be playing by on my account. Now you may be wondering, what the heck is a chunk? Well, RuneScape or Gilinor is comprised of 64 by 64 tile chunks as you can see in the background of this slide each chunk is broken up very plainly thanks to the chunk community they have created a program that allows me to select a chunk by random once I have completed a chunk now let's get into what that means you may be wondering what is the objective of the account well it's really quite simple the objective is to complete any and all content that is doable and within my means only using the chunks that I have unlocked. Now in the beginning of the game you obviously start in Lumbridge. In Lumbridge there is a yew tree. So before I can move on to any other chunk randomly selected by the program, I must chop, burn, and fletch yew logs at their first process. So that means across the board if I encounter a rock I have to mine it and smith the ore and if possible smith the bar as well. If there's a tree chop it, fletch it, burn it. If there is a way to obtain a best in slot item via a shop or a monster I must obtain the item and have the level needed to use said item. For example if I come across a giant frog in the Lumbridge swamp they drop mithril spears and even though I will never use a myth spear on this account I do need to get that myth spear drop before I can move on to another chunk. And lastly if there's a way to obtain an item I can process via a primary method or PVM I must obtain the item and get the level to use it such as a rune bar from Bryophyta, an unstrung bow, an unfinished potion, etc etc. So now the question is when do I actually have to begin a skilling challenge? Well a skilling challenge is started when I have a primary method of training or a secondary RNG related method of obtaining that item and or resource. So we're going to go through what that looks like right now. So a primary method of training is what you do, you know, whenever you train a skill primarily. Um, it's any action that results in a guaranteed outcome. So chopping a tree, you're going to get a log 100% of the time, unless you get an S, but that's not included here. And then you can always either fletch or burn that log, thus creating a primary training method for that for that skill. Also, it has a 100% uh, respawn rate and can be, re can be replicated infinitely. If you chop an oak tree in Lumbridge, it's going to come back for the rest of time or as long as RuneScape servers are available. A primary item only has to be processed at its lowest level to be considered complete. So that means if I were to chop a magic tree, I don't have to turn that those magic logs into a magic longbow before the before the skilling challenge is complete. I simply need to process them at their first level, meaning make them into arrow shafts, thus completing the content. As mentioned earlier, secondary resource is anything obtained or received from an action based on RNG. This rule is enacted when the item is strictly unique, best in slot, or begins a skilling challenge. So it isn't an obtain all items from each monster before I can move on type of challenge. It's, you know, when I come across an Abyssal Demon, I do need to get the Abyssal Whip. Or from Bryophyta, he drops a Rune Bar, which I can process. Thus, I do need to obtain that item and then get the level to process that item. Most Chunk Men do not elect this rule, but I have because if I didn't, well, the, the, the series would be over pretty quickly because, well, I'd be done skilling, you know, within like six months. Now let's talk about secondary training. This one's a little bit trickier. A secondary training method is anything that is gated by time 
or anything without a respawn timer slash non-guaranteed respawn, such as raking weeds, catching dragon amplings, and puro puro. Those things are obviously gated by time and or do not have a guaranteed respawn or a respawn timer, thus making them non-legitimate ways of training a skill and say I unlocked, you know, the cactus patch in Alcarid, which is very close to the beginning of the game, and my only way of training farming is by raking weeds, we'd be sitting here with no content for a hundred years before I got level 49 or whatever farming level I need to make a cactus. The other section that I have deemed as a secondary training resource is any guaranteed way to obtain XP that is not the intended use for that piece of content. For example, a great a great example of this is agility shortcuts or when you're doing Hosidious House Favor and you're pushing the plow and you get like two crafting XP per time you push the plow. That is not the intended use of that content. It just provides a very small amount of XP. They can be used to train my skill, but if they are unlocked and they are my only way of training that skill, they do not start a skilling challenge. A tertiary action is any action that is not specific to any one piece of content, nor is the action something sought after doing to be in a certain area. No tertiary action will ever begin a skilling challenge. Ever. End of story. Period. So that means if I were to get a magic seed from a tree nest i don't need to grind up to 75 farming to be able to use it i don't have to get the stale baguette before i can move on or if i were to get you know a dragon spear from red drop table or cut dragon stone i don't need to have the crafting level to use it these things are completely random could happen at any time and are non-chunk specific because they happen across the world completely randomly here are some frequently asked questions that i get a lot especially on video comments that i would like to address just to hopes that I don't see them again or you don't have to wonder about them. Since you have access to adamant rocks, magic trees, etc, 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 don't you have to grind up to make the best in slot items for, with those resources? No. Those items are not chunk specific, only RNG based grinds will make me grind out best in slot. So once I unlocked an adamant rock in Alcarid, I do not need to grind up to 88 smithing to be able to make an adamant plate body because an adamant plate body is non-chunk specific even though it is best in slot why don't you have to complete recipe for disaster in the first chunk i have well there's a quite simple answer to that but we still get it pretty frequently i obviously don't have all the chunks to unlock to complete it but once i can complete that quest or any other quest or skilling challenge i must do so and go back before moving on to a new chunk. Are you a masochist? Uh, uh, apparently I am for doing this. That was our really high level overview of the account. If you do feel like you have a good understanding, you're good, you know, you can stop watching now, but if you want a very deep dive into all the content across the board that I will, won't be, and any other rules or exclusions that I've made, feel free to continue to watch. Now I'd like to tackle all of the content that we won't be doing on this account, either ignored or blacklisted content. So ignored content is going to be content that I can choose to do at my own discretion if and or when I would like to do it but don't need to grind it out to completion. So the first two are Brimstone Chest and Laren's Chest. I can use that content when it does come up and I will be hopefully completing it passively but the uniques that you get from these are largely cosmetic and don't really have any sort of positive benefit and the grind could take months if not years to complete to completion so for simplicity's sake and for my own sanity we are going to be doing those passively the rest of these are simply mini games that either provide cosmetic or armor with very few benefits like castle wars armor um, i will not be doing any of these um, to completion last man standing i'll probably only use for the room pouch other than that, I likely, and, well, I guess Ring of Wealth imbued as well, but other than that, I won't be using it for any other content, and the rest of these, I'll be doing either passively or never ever. For the purity of this account, I have tried my best to make there be no such thing as blacklisted content, but for my own sanity, we are going to be adding a couple things to blacklisted content. Now, blacklisted content is content that I will never do unless for diary completion. I am taking it completely out of my series and will never use the content to my benefit no matter what 
Again, unless for diary completion. Sorcerer's Garden, we'll touch on that later when we get to farming. And then for the Revenant Caves, I mean, my gosh, there's not really even an explanation needed. The CDC should probably be focusing their efforts there in the Revenant Caves rather than on COVID right now. It's the worst, most toxic place in the entire game at the moment. Having an RNG-based grind there is a death sentence and... It could be removed on an integrity update at any time from Jagex, so I'm not going to be putting any eggs in that basket. We are just going to be completely skipping it. I mean, I could go to Revenant Caves to get, you know, Dragon Legs or something really useful early game, but for my own sanity and for the goodness of my heart, we are never going to be going there. Lastly, here's the end of the restricted content, endgame content. This is content I've elected to be endgame content. I do not have to grind out the completion as soon as I unlock the chunk, but I will at some point. I will probably do so passively. I think there does need to be some rule, especially with um, chain Chambers of Xerix. Uh, other than that, most other things are going to be grinded out after the endgame of the account or towards the endgame of the account. If you do have any suggestions of how I should rule these, feel free to let me know. I am always down to hear suggestions, but of course, it's Chambers of Xerix, Theater of Blood, The Nightmare, Inferno, Corrupted Gauntlet, Corporal Beast. All of these grinds could take six months to a year to complete, regardless of where you are in your account. So, for simplicity's sake, we are going to be labeling them endgame content and not doing them to completion once unlocked. So for transportation around the game, I'm going to keep this series pretty vanilla. I know there are some uh, chunkers who will say, hey, I have the Falador teleport unlocked. I can now potentially unlock that chunk. But for myself, I'm going to be locking myself to not being able to use any skill-related travel at all. Obviously, if I have a teleport within that chunk, I can obviously teleport to it. I'm not saying that I can't use teleporting. The only time that I can unlock a non-adjacent chunk is when it comes to either ships or the Edgeville slash Arty slash Wilderness lever. So this would take out, you know, can the canoe system. This would take out the obelisk system in the wilderness because that is completely random and I can't really control where I am teleported to in the wilderness. And I'm sure there are a couple other ways of transportation throughout the game that I'm just not thinking of right now. But... I am not I'm not going to be using them. The only ones that will allow me to unlock a non-adjacent chunk will be charter ships, boats, and the Edgeville slash Arty slash wilderness lever. Now bossing, the most exciting part about this play type, hopefully. Unless specified elsewhere, I once I encounter a boss, I do need to grind out that boss for any unique or best in slot items it may drop. Pretty simple, right? For the most part, it is. If the boss requires a certain item for it to be doable on a consistent basis, I may elect to continue the boss once I have obtained the necessary items. For example, Saradamon and Stamina Potions or Armadil and Chinchampas. If the boss turns out to be impossible slash near impossible, I may elect to push off the boss until I have obtained slash completed one specific goal, such as Scorpia, and I need I would 100% need a way of getting nature runes consistently, or the King Black Dragon and an anti-fire shield. Pretty simple there. Uh, if the boss drops a 1 in 5,000 or rarer unique or best in slot, I may elect to grind passively. For example, for Vorkath with its skeleton, skeleton visage or whatever it is, um, I can grind that. I can grind that passively. My only exception to this rule is the Dragon Warhammer from Shamans. I do need to grind that out as soon as I do unlock Shamans. We're going to be making one more small stipulation in this wrinkle. Uniques are weighted over best in slot. Now hang with me on this one. If you don't fully understand it, I totally get it. Just follow me. If a monster slash boss has a quote unique drop that other monsters slash bosses drop, I do not need to grind out that monster slash boss for all the uniques until I have all of the monsters slash bosses unlocked, even if it is best in slot. For example, I do not need to grind out a Dragon Chain Body from Calfight Queen until I have Thermonuclear Smoke Devil, Dust Devils, Choke Devils, etc, etc unlocked. A couple other items that might fall under this might be Drag Dragonic Visage, uh, Dragon Pickaxe, Onyx, Smoldering Stone, Abyssal Dagger, etc, etc. Um, one stipulation to this will be the Abyssal Whip once I do have... Um, Abyssal Demons unlocked, whether I have 80 or 85 Slayer, I do need to grind out the Abyssal Whip right away. So again, I want to reiterate this and make this as clear as possible. Even if a monster has a best in slot item for me, 
but other bosses drop it as well, such as Cal Fight Queen with a Dragon Chain Body. I do not need to grind out that item until I have all of the other bosses unlocked that drop that item as well. Now we are going to begin talking about specific skills. Should be pretty simple. Our first specific skill uh, we're, gonna, we're going to talk about is attack, strength, defense, and range. Uh, whether I encounter an item in a shop, like a Myth Battle Axe from Bob in the first chunk, a Maple Shortbow, a Dragon Halberd after Regicide, etc., etc., or via a monster slash boss drop, I must obtain the level to use the item so long as I have a primary method of obtaining range training items because you can always... Uh, you know, you can always train melee no matter what. Literally as simple as that. Don't think it needs any further explanation. Magic. So long as you have a primary method of training magic, any room that you obtain via a shop or an RNG related drop, whether killing NPCs or essence simplings, you must process or have the level to process that rune. If you unlock a new chunk with a teleport that allows you to teleport to that location, you must you must be able to teleport to that location as well. So for the Gorok teleport in the wilderness, which requires 96 magic, once I have Ancients unlocked, I do need to grind up to, well, 96 or boostable to 96 to be able to teleport to there as well. Runecrafting. Once Rune Mysteries is completed, I must obtain the Runecrafting level and runecraft at any slash every altar that I have access to. If the altar is locked behind a quest or house favor, I do not need to grind up to the level until I have the appropriate unlocks behind it. For example, I don't need to grind up to 54 runecrafting once I unlock Entrana unless I have Troll Stronghold completed. The other side of that would be, you know, Death Runes and Morning End Part 2 or Blood Runes and 100% Arceus House favor. Since construction is not chunk specific i mean you have a house you can literally teleport to that's nowhere in the world uh, i will be I'll, i will make my requirement for me to be any stash units that i can currently complete at the time of unlock for this to begin i would require a primary method of obtaining the planks and unlock sawmill and access to teak slash mahogany planks via a tree cutting them etc etc so that means um if i obtain oak Planks from Eclectics, that's a secondary resource, thus not beginning any skill challenges right away. If this stash unit requires an item I can obtain via an RNG-related grind, I must obtain the item. If the item is obtained via a skilling challenge, I do not need to obtain the item. This is the way that it is because, um, say I encounter a stash that... I need room plate legs for and I have no way to get room plate legs via a shop or an RNG related grind. Well, I don't want to be stuck grinding out 98 smithing because, well, nobody wants to see that. Agility. Agility is really quite simple. If I encounter a course, a shortcut, or an area, I must train until I am able to conquer that area. Simple as that. No need to uh, to dwell on it dwell on it any further. Herblor. This is one of the trickiest skills of the lot. Most junkers do not lock themselves to an herblor grind, but I see no valor in that, so I do want to make a grind where I can. Any chunk that has a primary method of obtaining a secondary for herblor, such as red spider eggs in Edgeville Dungeon, blue dragon scales in Taverly Dungeon or moleskin slash claws for bird's nest, I will begin a skilling challenge, but to avoid thousand hour grinds, we're going to make a rule. If the herbler grind is level 49 or under, I have to grind it out immediately. If it is level 50 and above, I am allowed to wait until I have one herb patch unlocked. This will go up in increments of 10 herb levels per one herb patch. For example, 60 to 69 herbler uh, requirement, I am allowed to have two patches before I start that grind. Uh, 70 to 79 herb lore, three patches, etc., 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 all the way up to 90 to 99, five herb patches are allowed. I believe this is the fairest way to do this, even because most chunkers do not have a challenge locked behind herb lore. I do want a challenge, and I think this is the best way to do it. Thieving, again, like agility, literally very straightforward. If there's something in my chunk that has a thieving level behind it, I gotta get the level. 
that's it, moving on. Crafting, much like any other artisan skill, is pretty straightforward. If I encounter an object that I can craft, I must, or at least to the lowest level of processing. If an uncut gem is obtained via a non-tertiary method, I must cut the gem. If a cut gem is obtained via a non-tertiary method, a tertiary method being a, dra a cut dragon stone coming from rare drop table, I must craft the gem into a piece of jewelry at its base level. Wood cutting, fletching, fire making, all these skills we've already went over, you know, if there's a tree, gotta chop it once the log is obtained, gotta process the log for fletching at its base level, which is typically arrow shafts. I do not need to make the best in slot item for myself again. Once the log is obtained, I must burn the log using fire making. Mining and smithing, much like the last, if there's a rock, gotta mine it. Once mined, gotta process the ore into a bar. If there's an anvil available, gotta smith the bar at its lowest level. Cooking and fishing, I, if I have the availability to fish something I, and I have all the proper gear, I must do so. Since I have decided to take RNG-based challenges, all of the big fish uh, will also have to be caught as well, such as big sharks, big swordfish, big tuna or bass i don't remember what it is once they're caught i will need to cook those fish any other cooking item if i have a primary way of obtaining those said items i must cook those items as well hunter if a creature is encountered i must catch it so long as i have a primary method of training hunter pure pure is the only muddy part here uh, so we have two different sections of Puro Puro. We have the primary and secondary implings. Primary implings have a guaranteed 5 to 30 second respawn rate, thus making themselves a primary training method and will force me to train Hunter if I encounter something else in the world, such as Black Chin Champas. I would need to use Baby through Eclectic Impings to train on those until I'm able to catch a Black Chin Champa. The secondary nature implings do not start any sort of scaling challenge because they are a secondary, time-gated, non-guaranteed uh, respawn rate, such as nature through lucky implings. Again, they don't start any scaling challenges, nor what they drop do they start any scaling challenges as well. Thus, if I were to obtain, I don't know, dragon dart tips from a dragon impling, I do not need to begin the grind to 95 fletching because it is a it is a non-fixed respawn. Farming is one of the more annoying skills for a chunk man, largely because everything in farming is time gated. But luckily, we do have a couple ways around this. The first one being Sorcerer's Garden. Uh, it is a it is banned from the account for this exact reason. Uh, in Sorcerer's Garden, you can go and pick herbs for like 50, H, 50 XP every like two minutes. If I were to unlock the spirit tree in Draenor, which is very close to the beginning of the game, and my only primary way of training farming is Sorcerer's Garden, you wouldn't see a video for 2,000 hours or something like that. Uh, 2,000 hours of game time, I should say. So for that reason, we are going to be locking Sorcerer's Garden completely. The second being, and thankfully we have this option, is Tithe Farming, which is a good way to train consistently farming without being time-gated. Once I have Tithe Farm unlocked, I will use Tithe Farm to train up to whatever farming level I will need at that point whether it is 83 for the spirit tree or any other higher level, 90 for redwoods, etc., etc., etc. Last but not least, we do have the best skill in the game, if I do say so myself, Slayer. Now, Slayer obviously is very tricky because Slayer Masters will take you all over the world killing the most random monsters possible. But luckily, we do have a way to reset tasks. If I do encounter a Slayer monster that I do need to increase my Slayer level to kill, I must start doing as many tasks as possible. If I have a task I cannot complete because I do not have the chunk unlocked, I must either wait until I have that chunk unlocked or cancel my task and take a Toriel task if I have Toriel unlocked. If Toriel assigns a task I cannot do, the Slayer grind is put on a hold until I'm able to do that task. If I have Toriel unlocked, that is the option that I have to take. The most important part of Slayer, and please listen carefully, any Slayer boss monster, when encountered in a chunk, will not start a skilling grind. That means Cerberus, Kraken, Thermonuclear, Smoke Devil, Sire, etc, etc. This is because these tasks are obtained via a secondary method, and I may encounter one without a task. They will be killed immediately and until completion when the task is assigned with the proper Slayer level. Last but not least, we have Barrows. Most Chunkers complete Barrows when they have one full set complete. I will be completing the entire set, the entire collection log, 
but perhaps not right away. If I do not have either the Mauritania legs or the Barrows teleport by the time Barrows is unlocked, I will either grind out 250 Barrows chests or one full set, whichever hits first. Without those unlocks, the Barrows grind could take months and months and months and months to complete. Um, and since most chunkers count it completed once they have a full set complete and I would like to do the entire thing I think it's okay that I put this small caveat on here For God Wars the only stipulation that I'm going to be putting on God Wars is that I am allowed to have the Trollheim Teleport unlocked before the grind begins. I likely won't even allow myself to unlock God Wars until I have the Edgar's Ruse quest complete so that's that's a pretty obvious one why I'm doing that and it doesn't really change much for the time being I think that is all that I can think of at the moment I'm sure you know the world of Gilinor is a massive one of the largest worlds in all games of all time and I'm sure there will be things that do pop up that I will need to think further about but for the time being these are the rules for my account if you do have any suggestions or any questions feel free to reach out or you know leave a comment if you want me to address something specifically I'm always more than happy to I hope you all did enjoy and i hope you all look forward to watching me play this account out to the uh to the death of me bye